Ah, the Federal Reserve, the all-knowing, all-powerful, all-wise organization that was established to protect the almighty U.S. dollar. And yet, since the existence of the Fed, the value of the dollar has lost about 96.3% of its value due to inflation. Now, inflation is not new. In fact, it's part of a long tradition that goes back generations. Rome, for instance, discovered that bread and circuses couldn't pay for themselves, but by debasing their silver denarius in the third century, they can pay for a lot of bread and circuses, until, of course, it collapsed their economy. In the 14th century, the Yuan Chinese dynasty realized it was a great way to pay for all the wars they were conducting, until, of course, it collapsed their economy. And as recent as the 20th century, the Weimar Republic in Germany discovered inflation was a great way to pay for all of those pesky World War I debts, until, of course, it collapsed their economy. So you're starting to see a trend here. And that trend is that across time, geography, and culture, inflation creates chaos within an economy. And yet, the Federal Reserve has been printing so much money that over 40% of all dollars in circulation within the United States have been printed in the last 20 months. Why would they be doing this? Well, it probably has something to do with a belief that if managed correctly, inflationary policy can save a struggling economy. And this takes us back to October 19th, 1987. Stock markets around the world are reeling from the largest single day financial crash in history as both the Dow and the S&P 500 fall over 20% in a single day. And as you can imagine, everybody was screaming for somebody to do something. So Alan Greenspan, the chairman of the Federal Reserve, drastically lowered interest rates and began injecting the markets with newly printed cash. And this strategy became known as the Greenspan put. And the idea was is that once the market recovered, then we could go back to sound monetary policy. Except that didn't happen. And the reason why is because Wall Street realized that the government would come in to save the day with cheap credit and new infusions of cash, since it was politically untenable for the market to make a major correction. But the Greenspan put came with a lot of consequences. In order to explain this a little better, I want you to imagine an addict that desperately needs to get sober, but instead of allowing for that difficulty that comes with that process, you just keep pumping him full of more and more drugs to assure he never comes down from the high until one day you kill him. Because far from softening the blow, these cash infusions and artificially low interest rates actually fuel the very bubble that brings about the next market crash, as history has shown time and time again. Now, I get it. It's tempting to believe with just the right amount of expert manipulation, you can keep your economy in a perpetual boom state. But what history has taught us is that far from saving us, devaluing a currency through inflation only encourages more bad investment while at the same time robbing people the value of their money. And how bad can inflation get? Well, have you ever considered paying a trillion dollars for a loaf of bread? Because the people of Zimbabwe have, and we talked about that in this video right here. I'm Nick Freitas with the Y Minutes, where we challenge the popular narratives of our time. Visit our channel to subscribe and share an example of how inflation is hurting you or someone you know.